Welcome. My name is Alex Key. I'm a product manager here at Oracle's .NET Development Group, and we're going to talk about Oracle Data Provider for .NET Database Connections, how to use connect descriptors and net service names. Most beginners of developing with ODP.NET usually start out with the easy connect method to connect to the database. The easy connect method is very easy to use, but as you get into more varied Oracle database deployments for the client and ODP.NET, you'll want to use connect descriptors and net service names in order to support those many varied and different scenarios. I'm going to show you the many different ways to be able to use connect descriptors and net service names within ODP.NET, whether you want to use it in your .NET config file or if you want to store them on your file system. So let's go to Visual Studio. In Visual Studio, let's open up a new project. And we're going to open up a console app. We're going to keep it simple here. And in this console app, obviously, the first thing we'll need is ODP.NET. So let's go to NuGet and download ODP.NET. We're going to use the Manage Provider. So if I right click on References, I'll manage NuGet packages, and we'll browse NuGet.org for our .NET package. Here it is, manage.dataaccess. We install it. We see that that's the correct package we want. We accept the license and it gets downloaded and configured. So now that we've downloaded and configured it for, um, for a generic deployment, let's start adding some code. First thing we want to do is add the namespace to uh, manage ODP.NET. And we just need the client namespace. We don't need the types. Uh, we'll keep the application quite simple since we're just demonstrating connections. And then we'll add some code. I have a code snippet already created, so let's use that. And uh, just to explain what the code does is it connects to the Oracle database and retrieves from the HR schema the first name of employees from Department 50. Uh, what it does is not terribly important for this lesson. We're more interested in the connection information. So let's start configuring the connection. So obviously with the HR schema, we're going to connect with the user ID HR, and we're going to give it the password for the database HR connection. And then you can see that what has already been semi set up is the uh, easy connect method using the IP, the port number, and the service name. We're not going to show that in this lesson, so we're going to comment that out. What we are going to show is using the connect descriptor and the net service name aliases. Here it's asking for what is the alias that you want to use. So we're going to enter in into our data source Oracle. I haven't defined what Oracle is yet, but we're going to define it soon. This will be what the alias is so that when ODP.NET looks for the connect descriptor about how to connect to the Oracle database, it will use this alias to match up with that connect descriptor. Let's define that connect descriptor. We can define that in our .NET config file. So let's go and open that up so that we can go modify it. So here we are in the .NET config file, and let's move down to the Oracle Managed Data Access Client section of the config file. This was added in when you downloaded Managed ODP.NET from NuGet. Let's see what we can modify here. We can see that the alias has already been created, a sample one here. We we created it as Oracle in our application, so let's define it as Oracle here. And then we look at the descriptor, which provides the more complete information to be able to connect to the Oracle database. Uh, we see that the protocol being used is TCP. We see the host is by default set the local host, and my database actually happens to be running on this computer, so we can leave it as local host, but obviously you would put in your server name or your IP here in the host. And then the port number is it's the standard 1521, and then the service name, which I've defined as ORCLPDB rather than the default name that's being used here. I can just run it now. I'll hit F5, and this should work. We should be able to connect to the Oracle database and see the all the employee first names from Department 50, and that we see exactly that there. So it's it works just great. Now, remember what's happening is that the alias is being used to find the connect descriptor defined here. I can move the connect descriptor right into the data source attribute if I'd want to. So if I copy this here in the descriptor, I'll hit Control C, I'll go back to the program, and then I copy over the alias and just insert the descriptor. I can just run it like this as well. 
and we should be able to see the same results we saw before. Perfect. But since a lot of people like to use aliases, let's reverse that out and just go back to Oracle here. You've just seen how you can define your connect descriptor within the config file. Let's see what other ways you can define your connect descriptor. So let's, uh, let's comment out this and try to use the connect descriptor from the file system itself rather than from the .NET config file. Some people like to use a file uh, to store their connect descriptors. The file name that Oracle defines to be used is called tnsnames.ora. Let's see how we can do that. First, let's comment this out. And then let's go to the uh, working directory. And the default location to use for your tnsnames.ora file location is the current running directory. That applies to both web applications as well as client-server applications. For, since we have a client-server application in this console project, uh, it's in the bin debug folder. And here, let's create a file. This will be a text file. But we're going to call it tsnsnames.ora. So let's open this and let's copy over the connect descriptor. The connect descriptor requires a net service name alias. And that's it. So we just set the net service name alias equals the connect descriptor. We save this file and uh, we can run it from right here. we see that it successfully executed again. It was able to find this tnsnames.ora file because it's in the default location, as you remember I've stated. A lot of times you might not want to put it in the current running directory. You might want to put it in some other place. Let's choose another location to put this in. Let's say we wanted to put in another directory here. Let's just choose this one. Now, how do you tell odp.net to find the tnsnames.ora file in this directory? You have another setting in your config file, which you can place in. Let's, it's called the tns underscore admin setting. And then if we add an XML snippet I've created, we can see how that works. So this one is under the settings section of the uh, Oracle Manage Data Access Client section of your .NET config. And it's got this attribute, tns underscore admin, and then you define the directory where it's located. If we go copy and paste this directory here, we save it, and now let's run it. We see that the application successfully executes and connects to the database. So that, in a nutshell, is how to use connect descriptors and net service names. Uh, hopefully you can employ this in some of your .NET Oracle database applications in the future. And thank you for attending this lesson.